Do not come between the Nazgul and his prey. Look at the trees. What is up, guys, and welcome to the Beyond Sanas channel. My name is Shanks, and today we are playing a 1v1 matchup on a beautiful map, Mering Stream, in Battle for Middle Earth 1 on the patch 2.22. My opponent was pre picking the Gondor faction, but I was picking random and will get to play with the Mordor faction. Okay. 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 You know what that means, right? You know what time has come. It is the time of the orcs okay so at the beginning we need to you know build up the orc pit that's very important and also recruit the q team smeagol smeagol is a very good looking <laughs> buddy of mine just like my in real, <laughs> real life friends <laughs> no 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 my real life friends are not looking that good look at this cute you see him okay so the plan is to capture all settlements next to our bees and the problem is going to be though that my settlements are close to the opponent castle and my opponent should be able to reach to them very fast. On this map, you have like three settlements for free. There are no creeps protecting that. So we can, you know, in, in, in the best case scenario, we should be growing rich. But it might be quite tough. Okay, I'm not gonna fight this actually. I can't, it's a 2v1 situation. My orcs, they don't stand a chance. So we're gonna go for like an offensive push. So basically he made a mistake. He was sending those soldiers forward without capturing the settlements next to his castle. Uh, playing too aggressive sometimes is not that rewarding and can easily backfire. And against Mordor you wanna do it slow but kind of fast at the same time. It's hard to explain but you wanna still capture your own things. If you don't, your opponent, in this case me, I can capture them and you will need to use your Hobbit to destroy those settlements which will take you a long time. So now we are looking for a 3v2, 4v2 situation. We are trying to stall the soldiers until we can get more reinforcements on the field. That's gonna be a very important step. And later on we will also build the Haradrim Palace, which will be used for creeping, okay? There we go. So the plan is to recruit Haradrims. With the Haradrims we can creep the work layers, which are the majority of the creeps on this map. And then we can also capture the outpost. And in addition to that, Haradrim Palace will give us the chance to recruit the soldiers of Rune. And by the way, he made a mistake by picking the Alvin Wood. Against Mordor, you don't pick Alvin Wood. You don't pick anything until you see him using something. And when you play Mordor against Gondor, don't pick anything from the spell book either. Just wait until your opponent using land. Then you can use your own land. If you use a seal, you can use Eye of Sauron, okay? Okay, so good start into the game. That's the start we needed. And I will show you guys, you know, when you get a good start with the Mordor faction, the snowball effect with this faction is kind of crazy. I'm not, even, I'm not even kidding. So the most important stage of the game is the early game stage. If we can get through this without taking too much damage... Oh my goodness, <laughs> that's gonna be crazy! Okay, so I like this interactive gameplay with the Haradrim Palace. I don't want to sit in my base and save up for the troll cage. I think that's not needed. And with the runes which are acting like a pikeman, we can even fight against his op against the opponent Gondor Knights. Okay, so this is looking not bad. And you can see, what I'm doing here is I'm using my orcs to kind of tank the damage, so my Haradrims are, being un uh, are gonna be untouched. My opponent has not a very good looking piece, and of course, we will lose those settlements outside, but it's kind of expected. And as long as we can take the creep, we should be in a good spot. Again, time should be favoring us. So the mid game from Gondor is ex Mordor is extremely strong. But in the lead, 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 lead game, when we unlock all the power points, when we have like lots of money, Gondor is gonna outscale every faction out of two main reasons. Reason number one, the defensive capabilities of the Gondor castle with the Stormwalker trebuchet. But also the reason number two, Gondor has the best power point summons in the game. They can summon rangers, Eagles, Eagles by the way hard counter to Mordor, and Rohirrim, and AOD. And we can only summon Balrog, <laughs> you know, that's all we can do. But Balrog is extremely powerful, so definitely can easily match with the summons like AOD, Eagles, and so on. Okay, so you can see that we want to demolish the buildings in time, uh, if we can, to not feed lots of power points, because it's a power point battle. It's a snowballing game, by the way, this game battle for Middle-earth 1 is. And the power points are the main reason, the main focus. 
So the longer the game goes on, the more impactful the power points are gonna be. And when you are the one who's paying attention, when you are the one who's demolishing buildings in time, trust me on that one, you will always, always win the power point battle. Because, you know, it, it, it's gonna be a huge difference between a player who's demolishing the buildings in time and the player who doesn't. The player who doesn't will eventually end up feeding like tens of 20, 30 power points to his opponent. Look at this hub, it was cloaked around this area. Quite annoying. Very green took, but luckily our eye of Sauron can reveal the invisible units. So we need to put the, uh oh, I did, come on, go inside, come on. Do it. Nice. Okay, good luck destroying this man. Oh, there was, <laughs> you see when you trample into the Haradrims, they are acting like a pikeman. They have like a revenge damage when you trample them. So you need to be careful to not trample them, you know? Okay. So let's talk about this mod of action. The downside of the mod of action is the fact that you have no upgrade potential. You can only buy banner and fire arrows. But you have no heavy armor, which is the most important upgrade in the game. But on the bright side, we don't need this because we have lots of leadership. We have Drama Troll leadership, Witch King leadership, Darkness leadership, Eye of Sauron leadership, you know, all of that stuff being able to stack with each other. And this is gonna be more than enough, uh, enough of uh, armor boost to replace the heavy armor completely. Okay? Beautiful. All right. So, hopefully we can destroy the outpost. I'm gonna recruit some more units and commit to the outpost. Our look, our eco is looking phenomenal. Phenomenal. And my opponent has not a very good looking beast. <laughs> what is he doing actually? He's so poor. We will have very, very soon a Nazgul. We can even skip the Nazgul and go for the Witch King. Nazguls and Witch King, they actually have so much impact on a map like this. I mean, on basically every single map. Okay, here's Boromir, the captain of Gondor. But Boromir was, Boromir was saying one does not simply walk into Mordor. What happened, bro? What happened? Did you change your opinion? You shouldn't. I mean, I think it's a risky move what I'm doing here, by the way. <laughs> like, I don't think we have the damage output to destroy this, but at least we can eventually kill the well and destroy the statue. Destroy the statue, I mean. Um, if we can stop those arches from getting inside, they would be golden. But it looks like we can't. Um, you know, when you play Gondor against Mordor and you build your archer range at the outpost, it's actually quite dangerous thing to do. Because, again, you need to recruit three archers, three Gondor archers in total, to get your archer range to level 2. And if your opponent is able to destroy your building before you can buy fire arrows, you will lose over two minutes time. Which, again, this game is about speed and tempo, and the last thing you want is wasting your time, you know? So for that reason, I'm recommending you guys to build your important stuff. Archer range, steeple, and park it place, for example, in your castle. Look, you see? With the orcs, we are taking over the map. And the, you know what's the best thing about the orcs? Yeah, they are for free. They don't cost anything, boys. They cost nothing but time. Okay, I mean, look at this. <laughs> Runes plus two orcs. The brothership, the brotherhood between the orcs and the evil man. The evil men, in this case, are the men of the east, not men of the west. Men of the east versus men of the west. And in order to make this more entertaining, entertaining, we will also build more Men of the Best units. And Men of the Best, not Men of the Best. Men of the East, that's what I was trying to say, sorry. And you know what, the, what those creatures are called, don't you? I think you know. I think you know, boys. We will recruit the elephants, the Muma Kills. Okay, so it's time, boys. <laughs> oh, it's time. It's time. Basically, when you play Mordor in the late, 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 late game, I mean, that's not the late game yet. We are still in the mid game, but it's, it looks like we are in the late game because we had a phenomenal start into this game. When you are playing Mordor in the late, late game with unlocking every single power point from the spellbook, you have like three money making abilities. And one of them, the one I will name now, is a very underrated one. Nobody's picking this, but they should be picking it. And it's called Scavenger. Scavenger means you passively gain money 
for killing enemy units. In late game, you will end up killing lots of units, trebuchet, archers, knights, heroes, and they are so rewarding um, in terms of money. When you kill them, if the scavenger being unlocked, you can basically have like a empty base and scavenger all alone can maintain your eco. Okay, I'm going ham, boys. <laughs> I'm going ham. Okay, we have a bunch of orcs, Easterlings, or co also called. Um, okay, there was a mispositioning. I should have sent the runes f fast, or you know, <laughs> faster. Yes, ranges already. I, I I lost too much time. I should be going a bit sooner. And we need to destroy the well, though. That's very important, guys. When you when you are playing against Gondor or Rohan and they have an outpost, and you are trying to destroy the outpost, the first two buildings. And I will tell you the, in which order you have to destroy first are, is the well, the well, the first one, because the well is working in this game. It can also affect the units when you are fighting. So basically, they can respawn over time around the well, even if they are in the in the fight, and they can heal up. And the well healing is kind of crazy. So the well first, and statue next. Okay. I mean, he summoned the ranges here, so I think we won't be able to destroy this. <laughs> I mean, to be honest, I'm surprised about the defensive capabilities here. And I'm messing up my... <laughs> I'm, I think I'm feeding too many power points. I think. But it's it's okay. Look, with the Witch King being around, when you play this well, the Gondor Knights, they shouldn't be able to achieve anything until my opponent will get Witch uh, Gandalf on the field. So basically, after Nazgul and Witch King, lead, uh, map control should be yours. Because every time we see Gondor Knights, we will say thank you very much for the power point donation, you will kill them over and over and over again and get more and more power points. The breaking point we are looking for is going to be darkness. Darkness is going to be important to get even greater amount of leadership. Again, the one thing you need to understand, leadership, which is unique, stacks. And that's a very important statement, by the way. So you basically cannot make dra two drama trolls and have two drama troll leadership working on your army or two Theodates or two Eomars. That's not possible. But you can have Eoma, Theodin, Dramatrol, Witch King, Gandalf, Boromir, Faramir, Dwarchand, Eye of Sauron, Darkness, all of this. Can you imagine, boys, in a 4v4 match? Imagine this for a single, 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 single second. I can't even talk. So basically, you are playing a 4v4 in, in your army. There is Gondor, Rohan, Isengard, and Mordor. And you try to reach the ultimate number in terms of damage and leadership, uh, armor leadership. Can you imagine what kind of multipliers you can get? It's kind of unbelievable. Do not come between the Nazgul and his prey. The brothers, Farami and Boromir, but what can they do? It's a big boy over there on his fell beast. And you need to call your big boy to deal with this. Your Pleb Rangers, they don't stand a chance. And of course, the fear has been improved in this game. So basically, you need to at least be level 3 or you need to have a hero for pure resistance to deny the enemy Screech or Elaine Deal or Cloud Prick. If you don't, we can have 3 fears. We can recruit 2 more Nazgûls, but we won't do this because we are about to recruit more Mumu Kills. The Mumu Kills, they are very interesting units. I think they are the most unique unit in the game because they are like a hard counter to heroes. If You, you need to kind of hard focus them down and you need to pay attention because sometimes when you target them with fire arrows, they go crazy. They go like crazy. What are you even kidding? Crazy, you know? Okay, so one more troll needed for the drummer troll. We will also, just like in the films, put Haradrims on top of the Mumukias. And I will try my best, boys. <laughs> I cannot promise. I don't know if he's gonna leave or not. But if he doesn't, I will try my best to turn this Gondor beast with the ultimate monster faction Mordor into a FOD, Forces of Darkness piece. So the beast from him is not going to have walls anymore. We will destroy every single piece of his wall, okay? That's gonna be the plan. The problem is the command points. So basically, we need to pay 50 command points for each and every single Mumma Kill we recruit. Which is quite a bit, you know. 
it's a lot of command points. So basically with 400 or 500 command points, we can still recruit 10 of them. But remember, we also need to pay command points for trolls, drama troll, and also the Haradrims are pleasing. Thank you so much for the follow, appreciate it. Thank you so much. DC. T1, 2, 3, 5, 7. What a nice username on Twitch. We have also darkness available, boys. Look, you see, Mordor, I'm always saying it because it's important, Mordor is a time bomb, okay? So, it like, when you play against Mordor in a one-on-one -on -one situation, it, it feels like you have like a timer at the top of your screen, and the timer kind of tells you, you need to win until this threshold, or you will lose, okay? And I think my opponent wasn't able to win in this threshold. And now, when you don't win, example A will happen. And we are out, just like that, you know? <laughs> That's why you need Gandalf. Without Gandalf, you have no burst potential, and I, I can just go for a greedy move like this. When there will be Gandalf around, I couldn't do this, because Gandalf Easter Ally can chunk me. But talking about chunking... Oh, oh! Darkness! Look, throw rocks, bam, bam, bam! <laughs> Who needs siege weapons? Nobody needs siege weapons! Your trolls can do it all. And when you have them clump like this, I want to say thank you very much because the Witch King's splash damage is coming in clutch. Sweet. He's summoning the rangers. He thinks they can do something about this mighty trolls. But even if they could, there comes the reinforcement, boys. The men of the east versus the men of the west. Oh, he's sweet, he's building towers, he's like, I'm safe over here, I have big walls and also lots of towers protecting me. That's so sweet from you, Gondor. The white city will fall. Boromir, you should suit to your opinion in the films. Faramir, 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 look at the 360, do you see the curve you made with the Mumakil? The move kills. Look, I'm I'm, I was telling you boys, we are going to turn this Gondor beast into a mortal beast. No more walls, all you can eat buffet, okay? All you can entry. Speak friend and enter. Melon. <laughs> I'm a nerd, boys. I'm a Lord of the Rings nerd. Sorry for that. <laughs> I'm sorry. So here's the outpost remaining, but you can see we can destroy every single piece of the wall in a few seconds. So he doesn't stand a chance. He brought, we kind of destroyed like, I would say 65% of the beast. But we are not done yet. The plan is to break every single part of the wall. Look at these trolls, man. Guys, you want to put your Witch King and Drama Troll always close to the con um, trolls. It's very important. Then they will deal 100% more damage. So basically, each troll <laughs> is like... Okay, he's gonna leave. Did you well play, guys? I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, don't forget to leave a like to this video. Subscribe for more videos like this in the future. I will see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself. Keep hitting like a truck. And as always, stay beyond standards. Peace out, boys.